I gave Manny credit today for actually doing what he did with the umpire and being like, this is bogus, this is BS, showing like he cares, giving a shit. Interestingly, I have no clue if it had to do with it or not. They actually got back into the game, had the you know go-ahead run on base, um, you know, held the tying run with two outs there in the eighth inning. But you know, I have no issue with Manny Machado getting ejected there. I just don't. The plate umpire was awful today. That pitch was not a strike. He showed his emotions. I'm kind of cool with it because the Padres are on the verge of getting swept by the New York Mets. So I, I was 100% cool with that. But that doesn't change the narrative that Manny has really struggled, although did have an RBI hit here today before being ejected. I'm I'm a little different than you, and that's fine. You feel that oh, you're a lot fine. different than me. That's fine. I don't feel that way with Manny. I feel kind of that it was like it felt like the easy way out. You know, you're yeah, upset. Maybe. You're upset with yourself mostly. Now the umpire is a bad call. I mean, he was bad for both sides. I mean, some of these pitches. I'm looking back on GameCast, and it's like right in the fucking middle, and you're yeah. like, well, he missed twenty pitches today. I mean, it's just a god awful umpire. Again, speaks to the problem with Major League Baseball and their umpires being just fucking absolutely abysmal but you know if manny's hot does he do that if manny is hot does he i don't know i mean the team isn't hot so even but no, if no, manny's no, hot i'm just, I'm just talking about, about in, i'm talking about individually manny machado if they're still trailing and they're still about to get swept in this series seven one but say he's hitting 450 his last 12 games i don't think so i don't, I don't know if we can answer that i'm, I'm i really don't I mean, it's not I, like he had. I mean, he had a hit today. It's not like he was struggling today. It kind of just he snapped, and the second he sm slammed that bat down, he was looking to get like if, if he he's going to get ejected, and then Schulte had to go out there and get ejected too. I'm not going to use. I, I personally don't think it's like, oh look at Manny. But that's fine if you do like. But I, it's not I looking at it's just I don't have an issue with a player being fiery about c compared to the alternative, which is a Sunday night baseball year ago, and they're all smiling in the dugout. So this to me is much preferred over the alternative. Yeah. I mean, okay. Well, also hustle down the line. That's different. We talked about that front. I mean, that's that's different. That's a different conversation. And also, he's not healthy, which is another conversation yeah well in, in general Manny Machado has been I mean this year for him has been a disaster disaster of a season for him personally like on the field because he looks like a complete shell of himself I mean he's got six home runs John June 16th no I'm with you I listen I've been critical of Manny just like you have I but I'm I don't I can say Manny has struggled all year every single night I can say that every single night until he hits six home runs in a 10 game stretch or five. But I'm just saying in this moment down seven, two in the sixth inning, it's a risk reward proposition. I'll get tossed there over one future AB in the game. See what I'm saying? Like, why not? Well, what's the, what's the negative? What's, what's, what are you going to do to hurt? What, what have you done to hurt your team? If anything, you've helped them because maybe someone says, you know what? Someone show up. You know, they, someone do something. They had that fake, they had that fake comeback in the eighth inning there. That show it was, was very like, fake. I mean, if not for Jake Deacon throwing a ball into center field, I mean, they shouldn't have scored in the inning. But that's how the Padres do. I mean, here's the thing, and I want to let, let's have the leaper conversation right now. Everyone can say after the fact they should have sent him because the inning ends. Mm -hmm. Nobody would have said send him if Fernando Tatis Jr. doubles down the right field line. He didn't, and Tatis really struggled this series after a 17-game inning streak. So that alone is perplexing. I'm telling you, Starling Marte, for all of his defensive inefficiencies, and there are a ton of them, has a strong-ass arm. He, If you watch that throw, Hassan Kim would have been out by 20 feet. Marte was baiting him to go. Did you see it? He hesitated yeah. before he threw. He wanted him to go so badly. Marte, one hopper. Did you? Kim would have been out by 50 feet or 20 feet. And if Tatis comes through, nobody ever talks about it again. But I get it. He didn't come through and say they should have sent him. If they sent him, he would have been out. Did you uh, see what Luis Arise said about this? Well, no, I did not. Okay. He said, quote, I hit it hard. As soon as I hit it, I said, send him. But then when I saw Marte got the ball and made a perfect throw, I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> I know Kim is fast. But we did not have a chance to score there. He's not that fast. He's a bad base runner. He's a really bad base runner. He's picked off in this game. 
Yeah, he's he's not a good. He's base not fast. At all. He's no. okay. He looks like he's fast. He runs like I'm like he's fast. He would be yeah. fast, but he's not fast. And and the hindsight of it all is amazing. Everybody has the hindsight. Yeah. But when you have, and I know we struggled this series, but I'm just saying, imagine Tim Leeper sends Kim. He gets thrown out of the plate with That's Fernando a- Tatis Jr. at the right. at, up next. You are getting <laughs> fired the next day. And people are telling me, you got to know the circumstance in the batting order. I'm like, yeah, that's the thing. Are you kidding me? They're paying this guy $340 million. He's 25. And you want to send him in front of Fernando Tatis Jr. because you want to risk it there? It doesn't make any sense. It's David Peralta up next. And you maybe send him there. Maybe he's thinking about it. And and guess what? There's always a think ahead process for these guys. They're not just standing there reacting to what's in front of them. And then at, at the end of the inning, they go, oh, Tatis was up next? Like, hmm. no. Like, they know the situation. And they have been moving the line that entire inning. Okay? Yes, I know Tatis was struggling in this series. I know he struck out four times today, which was bad. But, again, the the mindset of we have one of our best hitters coming up next. And in that moment, do I want to send Kim here and risk it, and I and 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 force the other team to make a perfect throw? Well, he made a perfect throw, and yeah, <laughs> he didn't send him. So to me, that's not on Leaper. I'm looking at the next guy. Fernando Tatis Jr. had a chance to drive him in, and he didn't get the job done. If you're blaming Tim Leaper today for that eighth inning, not sending Hassan Kim, well, then you better be having the the same amount of blame or even more for the guy that had a chance to actually do that in Fernando Tatis Jr. who struck yeah, out. You're right. If you're blaming Tim Leeper, then he would be 19th on your – honestly, he's not even on my list because he would have been out. I mean, yeah. it's like anything in life you don't know because something didn't occur. Therefore, you can run through any scenario in your mind. Nobody knows. Nobody will ever know. But, but what I do know is Marte's one-hop throw and that – freaking tag that was applied even though the runner wasn't there by the catcher was perfection yeah. and likely Hassan Kim wouldn't have even been in the like shot mm-hmm. the camera shot when that tag was made. I mean he was out by 25 feet barring something crazy yeah. jumps over a catcher he gets around a tag but I, I I'm all for what Tim Leeper elected it's, to do there when you have Fernando Tatis Jr you got to trust him to come through and plus and he's probably he thinking in the back of his mind John of what happened in, in um Anaheim when he sent pro far right and it was a perfect relay, and he was out at the plate. And was that with two outs as well? Or one out? I forget. Yeah, that was with Manny on deck, maybe? What was that? Yeah, there was. Mm, I forget. Anyway. Um, I mean, it's crying over spilled milk. And here's the other thing. It's the eighth inning. They then give up four you go to the Mets at the bottom of the end. Yeah, so like they matter. actually had four outs to work with. Like they didn't have to tie the game. There, you would have preferred if they tied it or took a lead. But I'm telling you, I'm I'm gonna take my chances with Tatis in that spot as opposed to get a guy thrown out before Tatis has a chance to bat. Like you said, if he's thrown out and Tatis is in the on deck circle, you know what everyone in the chat is saying tonight. You know what everyone's saying on social media. How on earth could you get him thrown out with Tatis on deck? Exactly. That's what they and, would say. And we could have uh, been like, well, in hindsight, in a, re- a different reality, he strikes out. That's right. All right, let's get to some of these supers, guys. If you're here, subscribe. All right, we are your home for real Padres talk. We're with you year round, so please subscribe. Smash the like button for us. Thank you for the super chats. We'll get to all of them here tonight. We'll tell you about our title sponsor, Mark Nimitz, coming up in a moment. Uh, Paul, thank you for the first super tonight. He says at least Manny was good and showed his leadership. Checks notes. Oh wait, never mind. Um, this is who Manny is. He's fiery. He actually doesn't get ejected that often. Um, I don't know if it was a bad leadership quality to get tossed in that spot. There's captains that get thrown out. There's managers that get thrown out. I don't think them losing this game is on Manny's ejection, nor do I think it's on Manny, even if he doesn't get ejected in this game. So that's just my two cents. I'm not saying he's a good leader. I would err on the side if he's not a good leader, but I don't think we saw anything about his leadership. I just think he was frustrated. Yeah, it's it's a... It's a culmination of, I think, personal frustration, kind of just getting to a boiling point. And when you have a shitty umpire, it makes it that much easier to just like sure. unload and pop off. 
Um, and that's what he did. It, it, I mean, I'm not going to excuse it, but I also can understand it. <laughs> like he got, he got rung up on a, on a bad call and he's having one of his worst seasons of his entire career. I think it is the worst season of his career. Yeah. Yeah. As to this point. Yes. To this point in the season. Yes. And you know, you know he's making a shit ton of money, you know, dealing with these injuries. I get it, but you're out there. And if you're out there, you're gonna be held accountable. That's how it works. And Manny's chose that style of, of life in the big leagues. He's going to play injured. He's going to play hurt. He's going to post. And by posting, I mean, play close to 162 games a season to try. Uh, like that's what he's going to do. But in turn, mm -hmm. If he does not perform and these injuries and hurting is like severely affecting his game, that's kind of too bad because you're putting yourself out there. When maybe some p other people are like, hey, dude, you should maybe take like, you should maybe two weeks here to get this right. It's a weird situation. I mean, from what we saw play out Friday with him jogging down the first baseline to them being in the field each of the last two days. And we said, we're like, what the fuck? It, it was a weird situation. I, I agree with that. I also don't think there's any scenario where he's anywhere near fully healthy. And I put it on Machado for putting him in that situation where he's at. Well, I don't put on Machado. I put on Machado and the organization for playing this stupid cat and mask game with him to allow him to dictate when he goes on the IL and when he doesn't. Essentially, if he doesn't break a bone, he's not going on the IL. I think they used three different third basemen today because Manny was ejected and they pinch hit at some point. It was bizarre. He's not healthy. He's going to play. He's certainly not sitting at this point, and it is what it is. Um, Rita, thank you. He says, um, I appreciate the super chat. He says, put Manny on the IL. Let's try to get the record for salary on the IL at one time. No, it's not happening. No, that's not ideal, unfortunately. But you, it's a fair point. I mean, Musgrove, Darvish, Machado not being healthy right now, Bogarts. I mean, that's crazy. That is that is kind of crazy how it's much crazy. money is on the IL. It's crazy, but... I I'm I'm not going to use it as an excuse. Some might. I'm not using it as an excuse. No, not when the team can go 80 and 82 and get to the postseason. Like we're yeah. not asking for this team to move heaven and earth to get to the postseason. This ain't 1997. We got to win 100 games to get there. You got to win 80 to get there. Uh, Jason, thank you for the super chat. You can click the dollar sign below the chat box. We'll get to all the supers. He says uh, sometimes the offense can be as imitating as Ed Whitson's shirt. Off 84 Atlanta Brawl, what can be done to oh. improve the team's lineup? Oh, that iconic, infamous Padres yeah. Braves Brawl from 40 years ago. Um, as imitating as? I mean, it's honestly, I don't, it's not like the lineup. I'm not sitting here like, man, if we had a better lineup, we'd come back from 7-1 down at City. Game's over. Most teams are done in that spot. The fact that they've actually made games of some of these is almost like remarkable. To me, the game's over. You go down 4-1 on the first inning, you've got a 10% chance of winning. That is the mathematical percentage chance of winning on the road down 4-1 after an inning. 1-10, one 1-9. In mm -hmm. So, like, you're screwed. So, yes, the offense isn't great. Yes, they've struggled against left-handed pitching. But there's no offense in baseball that's good trailing 7-1. None of them. None of them are built to overcome 7-1 deficits and win 50% of the time. Zero of the 30. What did Schilte say today that was an A plus? Was it their approach and like their like preparation? Yeah, I don't even know. I, I I the second he started talking, he said something about A plus, and I was just like, oh my god! I'm like, whoa, dude! A point, you're busting out A pluses here. And he talked got, about it for like thirty seconds. And you got swept, we just got bro. I mean, God, just, I'm not gonna get uh, anyway. Um, yeah, dude, I, I mean. mean their offense is, is... Is this a lineup thing today? Or I mean, listen, the first two games, they were anemic on offense. Dude, their and offense today, is, they kind of did something. Their offense is just like their record. It is a roller coaster because they... One game looked like, I mean, the best offensive, best offensive team in baseball, and they go three straight games versus lefty. Can't do shit. I mean, really, John, if we want to break it down this this last week, the four straight lefties they faced, they did not do well against those four lefties. They, I mean, they're horrible versus Quintana and Manaya Saturday and Friday. And then and they weren't good against the A's starters. They either. weren't. The A's I, I was going to tweet out the numbers, and I didn't care after set because it was bad. I mean, it, 
And by the way, they're facing like real left-handed pitching against the Phillies. I just screenshotted it. And the, um, and the Phillies are getting Trey Turner back. But you're facing Rancher Suarez. He's got a 1-7. Good okay. luck. So good luck. And you're facing Christopher Sanchez, who's got a 3.07 as a good left-handed pitcher. So, and by the way, Aaron Nola is not some walk in the park. No. He He's actually last one of the best pitchers in all. baseball. He so those are the three you're facing. Stuff. And you got Vasquez, King, Waldron. And I'm not, I said this after Friday. I said, it's not like if you go one and five on this road trip, you've ruined your season because you haven't. But you got work to do to not go one and five on this trip. You got real work. It would be yeah. impressive to not go one and five on this trip. They will actually show me something if they went two of the next three games in Philadelphia. That's what they're going to do. Yeah. I, I, it's crazy, man. Because in the, what was it that fat that uh, Fadden tweeted out? It was like, like nine a, and ten in the nineteen games, and that softened schedule. Softened schedule. Um, I think I said this before. There's no soft schedule with this team. There's <laughs> no. There's no layups with this team. There's no easy patches with this team. Um, you're right. It's just the schedule, and that's what it is. I'm not going to look at this schedule a- anymore, really. And I, I said August 1st is going to be like a, a probably a, a huge part point in their season where they face like the Rockies and the Pirates and the I forget who else the Marlins. I think it is right. Yeah, maybe like the four, Marlins. 14 game stretch over. I'm done. I'm I'm that's out the window. I don't trust this team at all. Um, they haven't shown it. They haven't proven it. Um, it's just the schedule. So. There's good teams and there's bad teams, and the Padres will be playing those baseball teams. And there is no way in hell anybody out there should ever again this season, until they prove it, say the Padres should take advantage of X series. Blow the chat box. All right, so Manny McNuggets is what he's being referred to over the last couple of days here in the chat occasionally. Manny McNuggets, the IL now. Where is the general manager? When is the last time we heard from AJ publicly? It's been a few weeks now, I would say. He's in his dungeon trying to yeah. trade off the entire farm system for a sub <laughs> yeah. 500 team. Yeah. <laughs> Once um, again. He follows up by saying Manny has gained 30 pounds since 2019. Why? I, I don't think that's accurate, by the way. Do you? I, mean, I, I don't know. I don't think he's gained more than he, – he's never been light. Like – He's not. I mean, if he's put on five or ten pounds, he put on five or ten pounds. I don't think it's a fat. I haven't heard um, from anybody that Manny's like out of shape. No, he hasn't put on thirty pounds, dude. No, if he put on thirty I mean, pounds, he'd crazy. be freaking massive. Yeah, exactly. He's again. I mean, he needs the weight for some of his power, which he's clearly lacking right now. Like, I don't want to see this guy like lose thirty pounds. He would have. He'd never hit a home run ever again if he lost thirty pounds. He's not going to run quickly. If Manny loses, forget. Let's use this stupid number: thirty pounds. You, is he going to steal 25? But what is what is losing 30 pounds going to do for Manny? Is he going to feel better? No, he already knows how to feel somehow. Is he going to run better? No. Is he going to hit for more power? No. Manny knows his body. I'll say that. He knows his body. Yeah. He's never just been some, you know, rail. No. So I get it. People are coming down on Manny because he's not performing. That's fine. Uh, but to come down on Manny because he's fat, like I don't even think he is. I just think he's getting older and he's having a bad year and he's injured. Does it? He's injured. Does it feel though? And and he, to his benefit or to his credit, mm-hmm. you know, he got he had benefit of the doubt last year because of what he did in twenty twenty two. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So so oh no, oh lord, <laughs> bless you. Ow! <laughs> Which, don't don't break that Mova globe. I didn't. Anyway, um. He had benefit of the doubt last year because you he, he had the 2022 year that he had. Yeah. And so you're sitting there saying, like, he just did it last year. That's given the benefit of the doubt. Sure. But when you put up back to back really bad seasons, that's In when the second half start, of your career. Yeah, that's when people start going, What the fuck? You lose that benefit of the doubt. You lose that goodwill that you had. You know, like I, I've talked about it. That they haven't he one NLCS appearance in five in six seasons. I mean, mm-hmm. is that enough to build a statue for him? Like, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, and to go through as many managers that he's gone through and collapses that he's gone through and just really odd and weird 
quotes from him about this team and leadership and like he doesn't have the benefit of the doubt right now. I'm sorry. The rest of his career that he had previous to this, like it's that's great. But to sit here and be like, oh, yeah, man, he's going to show up. Well, we've been waiting for two years, guys. Well, but here's the funny thing. It's not that funny. If Manny had a down year last year, this year is incomparable. He's 115 OPS points below last year. And we all agree it was a down year. He had a 782 OPS. Reasonable. But I think the standard with Manny should be 800, even though he's never been a crazy high OPS guy historically. That's not who he is. Um, but he's got a 667 OPS. We are two series away from the halfway point. We're six games away, the Philly series, and then whomever they play when they come home. And like you said, I don't even care. Even though they're not playing, you know, like Darnay, who might be here now, um, put out hey, a Darnay. tweet saying, hey, these these next 10 games are like the biggest games of the year. And I, I'm with you, which is like, dude, they go seven and three against good teams or three and seven against good teams or seven and three against bad matter. teams. Or three. It doesn't even matter. So the point being that in six games at the halfway point, and he's going to have a sub 700 OPS unless he hits three or, you know, two or three home runs this week, which maybe he, like a year ago, he hit 30 home runs. I know. He's on pace right now to hit 13. That ain't 30 to 28. He's going to have to get 30 real to hot 13. Here. Real. He's going to have to get real hot. You know, we're halfway through June. I think last year, he was somehow it, at six in June at one was point. It, was it July where he kind of turned it on? <laughs> I'll look at his game logs. I, I mean, I don't fully remember. I think it was July because August, everyone had a bad month. August, True. the team just completely quit. I mean, the team just lost it. In July, he had a ton of home runs because he had yeah. a two home. He had two two homer games in July. So he had in July, just for reference, to your point, is he hit. Dude, he had 11 home runs in July. That's why he got the 30 home runs. He had 11. Right. I mean, are we banking on that this year? I'm not. I mean, say he has one more home run this month, and he gets 11. In, I mean, you got, what, 18 right there? Then yeah, you actually have a shot. Then, then yeah. you'd, I'd actually be like, yeah, you could do it. Right. I know. That's should, where it's hard. It's it where it's hard. But I feel like this... It should not be about Manny just getting to that benchmark of 30 home runs. Like it should be hey, they like, like 68 games, but he had 30 home runs. Like just like be better. Like I don't care if you hit 20 home runs or he hit 30 home runs. I want you to be a lot better. And if you hit 20 home runs, then I hope you have an OPS or over 800 at least. I mean, you're not a 900 OPS guy. We know that. No, but, he's not. But like, I feel like a good season for Manny now is like 820 OPS, 830. Like that's a really good Honestly, season. For I don't Manny. even what's his career OPS? 823. So I mean, if he touches his career OPS, oh, that's yeah. a good year. No, it's crazy that his career OPS. What's his best OPS season? Was it the year he got traded to the Dodgers? Yeah, it was. An, we talked about it the other night. I think it was like a nine. Know, what is it? Nine oh five or nine something. Yeah, like combined nine oh five OPS. He had nine like, fifty in sixty games. He played every game in twenty twenty. That wasn't his fault. Yeah, I don't know if he would have kept it up or not. Nine fifty is pretty crazy. I mean, dude, from nine fifty to this, yeah, not great. Wow, we had a nine fifty OPS for sixty games. I mean, can he can he do that ever again in the next nine plus years as a Padre? Nine fifty for a sixty mm -hmm. game stretch. Will he ever do that again in his career? Hope so. Probably not. But I'm not banking it, on it. Yeah. Will, thank you for your membership in the Super. He says uh, the MVP Manny will be back next year. Nice. Once the surgery behind him, this version of Manny's still better than average player. It's it's not. His OPS plus is 93. An average OPS plus is 100. He's actually 7% worse of an offensive player than the Major League average player. Think about that. He's 7% worse than the average hitter in the Major Leagues in 2024. Now, I don't disagree with the point that I'm not saying he's done. No. He might have a good second half, and he might have a great 2025. I'm not saying he's done, but I am saying he has things to prove. Yeah, and I think that's where people, that's where people like the 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 Manny like apologist or the, the the diehard Manny fans when someone says that like he's got something to prove. There's a lot of pushback, and the question is like, what? Why does why doesn't have Manny, Manny have anything to prove? Why? Because of what he did in Baltimore, because of what he did in 2022, like is is that really going to be the baseline for 
proven it. Like guys have great seasons all the time. Manny's longevity is going to probably put him in the Hall of Fame. You know, but it's not 2018 anymore. It's 2024. Mm -hmm. And in 2024, you're a different player than 2018 or even 2022. And it's about what have you done for me lately? It's about what can you do for this team now? Because they are in a win now mode. At least that's the thought process, right? I mean, if this team was, if you looked at every position on this team and they had like a bunch of rookies everywhere and just they weren't good and no one's expecting them to go to the postseason, Manny would not be getting criticized like this if he's having a down year. Mm -hmm. By the way, Manny's next hit, like this all, like because I'll see everyone's so like, oh, Manny's not a Hall of Famer. Manny's next hit is his 1800th. He's 31. He's got Man. nine years. He's under control for the next nine and a half years. He will get to 3,000 hits. He, yeah, he'll find a way. Back. He will get to three. He's absolutely pacing for it. Now, 500 home runs is arguable because the guy has no power right now. So maybe that comes back with his elbow surgery. Um, but, I mean, he's going to get to 3,000 hits. And like you said, he's got a better than average shot to end up in Cooperstown one day, whether people like it, hate it, or are indifferent to it.